Human turtle hybrid Mitch McConnell sat down for an interview with Sean Hannity on Fox News to talk about his new book titled The Long Game, featuring a foreword from Donald Trump. Oh, goody. And a portion of this interview really struck me because he talks about the most important, long lasting contribution that Donald Trump has made and that he has helped Donald Trump make. And this really is a segment that should terrify everyone because even though, uh, you know, Mitch McConnell is a ghoul, everything he's saying here is actually accurate because he is incredibly honest about how evil he is. What have you learned over this time with the president now, almost three years, that maybe you didn't know? Well, let me tell you what this book is about. This book is about the most long-lasting contribution that Donald Trump and Senate Republicans have made for the country. And that is putting young men and women who are strict constructionists who believe the job of judge is to follow the law on the courts. We did our 50th circuit court judge just yesterday. Sean, to put that in perspective, Barack Obama did 55 circuit judges in eight years. We've done 50 in three years, and we have at least a year left for sure. We're going to do more. One fourth of the circuit judges, remember, most cases don't make it to the Supreme Court. Most complex litigation never makes it beyond the circuit courts. This has been the most long lasting, important contribution the president could make well into the future, far beyond his tenure in office. Uh, so we'll have a judiciary more inclined not to make it up on the fly. You know, President Obama said he wanted to appoint judges who had empathy. Well, you know, that makes great sense if you're the litigant before the judge for whom the judge has empathy. Not so good if you aren't. Let's talk about the issue has come up. Let's say somebody were to retire at the end of, of this year uh, leading into the summer. You have been very clear if the president appointed somebody, you would follow through on that nomination. Absolutely. We definitely would do that. And this paperback that we were just talking about, the president's foreword is about judges. My afterword catches up what's happened during the Trump administration on judges because my memoir came out three years ago before the president was elected. What we've done here, the president and I together with this paperback uh, that you've shown on the screen, is to talk about how the judge project came about, how it went forward. If you were to recall, Sean, the most important decision I've made in my entire political career was not to fill the Supreme Court vacancy when Justice Scalia passed away. That was the beginning. And now we've got an exclamation point here after three years that we thought the public would be interested in reading about. And that's why the president and I collaborated on this paperback. I was, I was shocked that uh, former President Obama left so many vacancies and didn't try to fill those positions. I'll Senator, tell you why. I'll tell you why. I was in yes, charge of the... Uh, <laughs> of what we did the last two years of the Obama administration. I give, I, and I will <laughs> give you full credit for that. And by the way, take a bow. All right, that was a good line. Um, well, congratulations on the book. Yeah. His laugh is actually going to give me nightmares. Like, that is going to haunt me forever. That is incredibly creepy. And just having him smile over my shoulder, don't really want to look at it, is giving me the heebie-jeebies. Um, because this individual is the human embodiment of evil. But he's right. Love him or hate him, nobody can deny the fact that Mitch McConnell has been incredibly effective at, you know, furthering the Republican Party's incredibly psychopathic, destructive agenda. And he's done this just by being ruthless, right? Not being principled, being openly hypocritical. He does not care. He has a goal and he wants to achieve that goal by any means necessary. It doesn't matter how it looks and he knows he's a ghoul. He's laughing Ugh, and I'm thinking of him laughing again and you know, I'm starting to feel nauseous. Anyway, let's go through some of these accomplishments because this really is this. <laughs> he's ruined the court system for decades to come. So he says Obama did uh, 55 circuit court judges in eight years. Trump did 50 in three. 50 in three. A fourth of circuit court judges have been appointed by Trump. We just talked about this. He's correct. He says, you know, um, he'll also fill the Supreme Court in the event a vacancy comes up in 2020. 
doesn't matter that when Obama was in the last year of his presidency and Justice Scalia died, he said, nope, you know, we, we can't fill seats for uh, lame duck presidents. Now he's going to do that for Donald Trump. doesn't matter that it's happening in an election year. Um, he boasted about stealing that Supreme Court seat and then laughed when he admitted that he blocked Obama from filling judicial vacancies. I mean, what can you say? Even if we elect a Democrat, the best Democrat, Bernie Sanders in 2020, Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell's legacy will persist, possibly for decades to come, unless we take drastic action and we institute term limits, which we absolutely should do. It shouldn't even be a question. And I'm not just talking about term limits, you know, at the highest level, the Supreme Court. I'm talking about term limits for all federal judges, because this can't stand. This agenda is antithetical to a thriving democracy and just humanity's survival, right? This agenda is a radical agenda for, you know, all this talk of activist judges back in 2015 when the Supreme Court actually recognized, you know, the right to marry for LGBTQ couples. We heard people like Ted Cruz talking about activist judges. No, the true activist judges are the conservatives. It doesn't matter what the Constitution says, their conclusion will always be the one that is the most friendly to large multinational corporations. I mean, I don't even know what to say about this. It's it's just, it's devastating. Mitch McConnell's legacy will be one where, you know, he's remembered as one of the most destructive, albeit most effective, you know, Senate majority leaders ever. And he knows that what he's doing is evil. He knows these judges will curtail our freedoms, you know, roll back civil rights and civil liberties, but he does not care because he's there to do one thing, serve his donors. And so he's going to make sure that every conservative justice that's appointed is going to be one that will sufficiently serve, you know, uh, elites, the people who donate to Mitch McConnell. So the only good thing about this, um, if we can take anything away from this, is that Mitch McConnell is up for re-election in 2020. I endorse whoever his opponent is. I don't care who. I would literally vote for a steaming pile of shit over Mitch McConnell. And I literally mean that. Like, just leaving that seat vacant and just, like, putting a turd on that seat, that's better than Mitch McConnell. Still not going to undo the damage that he caused. The only way we can do that is if we have term limits. Still, he's got to lose. That's, like, the only bit of uh, sweet revenge that we can possibly have. But I think that what people need to learn from this is that Republicans are never, ever going to govern based on principle. They are hypocrites, they're ruthless, and they don't care. They'll, you know, throw that hypocrisy in your face. So it's time for, you know, Democrats to fight fire with fire. Actually be tough. Stand up for, for what you believe in. Stop worrying about what Republicans will say and the public will think. Republicans are winning. And they're ruthless. They're hypocrites. They don't give a shit. They never play nine-dimensional chess and think, you know, three or four steps ahead. They just act and they're ruthless. It's time for Democrats to start actually being tough and holding Republicans accountable as well. I don't have anything left to say. I just feel a little bit nauseous after seeing Mitch McConnell's face and his smile and his laugh. Yeah, very, very, very chilling and uh, disturbing. Mike is the worst progressive on YouTube. Please don't subscribe to him or become a patron. David Dole is so much better. Trust me, folks. He's doing a great job. He really is. Okay?